But we begin tonight with uh, omentum. We used this. Oh, we used omentum uh, as a headline on last night's show at this time to describe essentially the the political wind that President Obama has at his back right now. And while the word omentum was up on the screen, we promptly heard from all of our medically trained viewers that in addition to meaning what we meant, an Obama-specific ripoff of the word momentum, the word omentum is also a real word in its own right, which means something totally different. Turns out it is the thing in your stomach area that holds your guts in. Without getting too graphic, it's a uh, thin sheet of stuff that uh, sort of covers and protects and holds in your guts. This definition, which I admit to being completely unaware of before last night's show, uh, seems sort of strangely appropriate now, because in addition to his political momentum, President Obama is also showing off his omentum and trying to get Senate Democrats to have a little omentum, too. All that's changed in the last two weeks is that our party's gone from having the largest Senate majority in a generation to the second largest Senate majority in a generation. So I would just suggest to this caucus, if anybody's searching for a lesson from Massachusetts, I promise you the answer is not to do nothing. Uh, there was apparently a, a headline uh, after the Massachusetts election. Uh, the Village Voice announced that uh, Republicans win uh, a 41-59 majority. <laughs> it's worth thinking about. We still have to lead. That was them laughing and him quite pointedly not laughing. And that was the message from President Obama today as he met with Senate Democrats in what was a sort of town hall-esque setting. But there was something markedly different about today's town hall and the one that Mr. Obama held yesterday in New Hampshire, where he demonstrated all of, you know, his omentum. When President Obama opened it up for questions in New Hampshire, it was clear what was on the minds of the people who were at that town hall. Due to the great health care in this country, I'm a three-time cancer survivor. We're proud of it. Health care for cancer survivors is more expensive. How are the jobs bill and the proposed health care legislation going to account for the level of variability of the needs of cancer survivors? You also talk eloquently about the need to have more jobs and to be more energy uh, efficient. Uh, all these things together require that we get a health care act reform passed in the Senate. Uh, a better one than we have today. The first two questions out of the gate, health reform. That's what the crowd in New Hampshire wanted to talk to the president about. Today's Q&A session with the Senate Democrats had a decidedly different tone. Would you support an effort to revise, perhaps even revoke, those uh, back bilateral treaty, which gives China such an unfair trade advantage? This place looks broken to the American people. What we need to do differently is Democrats and Republicans to fix this institution. Are we willing as Democrats to also push back on our own party and look for that common ground that we need to work with Republicans and to get the answers? Would you today commit to working with Congress to pass comprehensive 9-11, a comprehensive 9-11 health bill that's fully paid for? So I want to ask you about small business. How do we rebuild our manufacturing sector? You've had some superb judges. Can you commit to work with us, at both parties, and keep trying to get them through? This issue of the deficit and rising debt, why should the Democratic Party be trusted? All interesting questions. Eight questions there from senators. Uh, all good ones. Not one of them about getting health reform passed. What Senator Gillibrand was referencing there was specifically health care for 9-11 responders. But the no questions about health reform was even after President Obama had pleaded with Senate Democrats to please get it done. So many of us campaigned on the idea that we were going to change this health care system. And we said we were going to change it. Well, here we are with a chance to change it. And so as we think about moving forward, I hope we don't lose sight of why we're here. We've got to finish the job on health care. We've got to finish the job. After imploring them to finish the job on health care, Senate Democrats asked 
zero questions about it. President Obama even, even tried to turn non-health reform related questions from Senate Democrats into health reform related questions, like this one uh, on all of his yet to be confirmed federal appointees. But I don't have a, GA, a GSA administrator. Even though I nominated somebody who was well qualified several months ago, and nobody can tell me that there's anything particularly wrong with her. Let's have a fight about real stuff. Not a, don't hold this, uh, this woman hostage. If you have an objection about my health care policies, then let's debate the health care policies. Please, let's talk about health reform. After being on the road for a few days now, getting his momentum back, one of the messages Mr. Obama has apparently heard is that the American people really want health reform done, and it's probably good politics to get it done. Based on their questions today, Senate Democrats are apparently not on the same page. And as Democrats in Congress, slowly, 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 try to figure out just how they want to proceed with health reform now. Republicans, meanwhile, have been busy beavers, figuring out new ways to slow it down even more in the hopes of stopping it. Senator Jim DeMint has now let it be known that he plans to offer endless amendments, one after the other after the other, to the revised health reform bill in order to try to essentially stall it to death. This is a tactic that has apparently never been tried before on a reconciliation bill, but Senator DeMint says he wants to try it anyway, telling the Hill newspaper, quote, you'll see Republicans do everything they can to delay and stop this process. I think you'll see us offering amendments to get us into November, if we can. So the question now is, do Democrats have the intestinal fortitude, the momentum, to face down the Republicans and, as the president says, finish the job? Joining us now is Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown of Ohio. He was at the president's town hall-esque event with Senate Democrats. Senator Brown, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Glad, glad to be with you again, Rachel. Thank you. It, it seems to me that the president is trying to light a little fire, create a little urgency in the Senate on finishing health reform and doing it soon. Do you think that's fair of him? Yeah, I think he, well, I would like to see him more engaged. I, um, I think that he, he exhorted us today to do it. Uh, I think we're going to. I think that we'll, we'll work in the next two or three or four weeks. We'll do reconciliation. Jim DeMint, there are rules that Jim DeMint can't continue to block this. He can try, but that won't last that long. Uh, the Senate then, the House then passes a Senate version as we, as we correct and make the Senate version better. Um, I fully expect this bill to move. I fully expect this bill to be signed by the president. Uh, I, I have very little doubt, Rachel, that, that, the, that, the, that the momentum's there, that the will is there of the Senate Democrats and the House Democrats. It needs a few changes to get House Democrats to buy into a bill that they didn't like as much. They're mad at the Senate for some good reasons. A lot of progressives in the House. There are things we've talked about on this show that we wish were in the bill, but it's still going to be a good bill that's going to improve the lives of millions of Americans without health insurance and, and tens of millions of Americans that have health insurance. We, we keep hearing that that there are, are parliamentary and procedural things that need to be worked out in the Senate. That's the reason uh, that there's been a delay, that things aren't happening right away. Is it your understanding that those, have, th those basic issues have been resolved, that there isn't anything that seems like it's going to block moving forward with the reconciliation strategy? Yeah, the, I, I know the leadership is at the president's meeting with leaders in the Senate and the House and, and planning to move forward. I don't know a timetable yet. I'm not sure they know a timetable yet, but it's, it's going to happen in the next month or so. It's, it's not going to be June or July, you're not going to be having these discussions about momentum and all these <laughs> th these things that you were talking about, Rachel. Well, the reason, of course, that um, you in the Senate may have to use reconciliation here to get this done is because of this standing Republican filibuster on practically everything now. Um, I want to play a very quick clip for you today. Uh, it'll be familiar to you from President Obama's comments this morning. He, he mentioned specifically this issue of the filibuster, briefly. So you had to cast more votes to break filibusters last year than in the entire 1950s and 60s combined. That's 20 years of obstruction packed into just one. But you didn't let it stop you. Senator Bennett, I think, was also getting at this issue in his question today. Is it your sense that your caucus, the Democrats in the Senate, are willing to look at reigning in the filibuster through a rules change, doing something else to break this supermajority stranglehold? 
Well, there's serious interest in that. As, as you know, Senator Udall, who talked about on your show last week, is, is, is very interested in doing that. A lot of us are following his lead. You know, progressives don't understand how, how 58 Democrats and two independents that mostly lean Democratic can't get this done because of the Senate rules. And this is a dysfunctional set of rules. It wasn't all that dysfunctional. Well, it was dysfunctional in the 50s and 60s on civil rights, but they broke that. Finally, progressives did and moved the country forward. We haven't been able to with nearly the regularity that we'd like to. And, and it's, we're the only democratic country in the world, I think, that has this supermajority requirement to change the status quo. And the status quo always protects the most affluent and the most privileged. And that's why it's so important to, to change these rules so ultimately a majority actually would rule in this country. And uh, we would see a very different government if, if progressives, who are a majority, by far a majority in the Senate, if we could, could, could have a little bit more success on the Senate floor and work around these rules the way they are. Senator, in terms of political momentum right now, um, I have been making the case on the air for the last uh, week or so that 